an internet of Western values um, is the question that I wanna ask. So, and this is spurred, the entire project is spurred by uh, a comment by Mike Pompeo, Secretary Mike Pompeo of the United States in a news conference with German foreign minister, uh, with the German foreign minister. Uh, and so uh, Heiko Maas. And so in this, he, he says, the US will seek to maintain an internet with Western values embedded in it, okay? And this wasn't a casual off the cuff statement. Um, he repeated it multiple times, a, a similar formulation multiple times over the next few weeks. And uh, we find resonance of this statement in Mark Zuckerberg in a debate with uh, Thierry Breton uh, this last year, a clear regulatory framework that comes out of Western democratic countries should become a standard around the world. And it is not a coincidence that this is actually, uh, these statements were both made with European leaders present. Um, and we find a similar expression within Europe. Um, here from uh, tw early 2020, a statement from Brussels, a new EU US agenda for global change and a statement at the end of uh, when, when uh, uh, President-elect Biden is, is selected, a statement from the EU Commission uh, communicating a desire to work together uh, for to set a transatlantic uh, agenda. Okay, so the, a, tra a new transatlantic coalition that would set the rules for the internet based on common values between US and Europe. So, I want to challenge this framing. First, it's important to note that implicit in this framing is some vision of the West as the global paragon of values, a moral leader bringing light and technology to the world. And there's famous quip associated, uh, attributed to uh, uh, Mahatma Gandhi. And the quip goes, when, when asked, what do, you, what do you think of Western civilization? Uh, Gandhi is reported to have answered, I think it would be a good idea. It's interesting then that it's Europe, Europeans also who complain about American tech companies, but that complaint is often, often seems tinged with some envy. Um, is the concern, sorry, um, I think I'm hearing a little bit of, uh, if anyone who is unmuted could mute, make sure to mute themselves, it'd be great. Um, okay, so there seems to be, um, in some sense, um, the, is the concern of the Europeans in this context that Europeans are subject to colonization by foreign corporations? Or is the concern more deeply that it is not European corporations that are the ones doing the colonizing? Here is EU Commissioner Thierry Breton declaring the EU's ambition to be at the top of the race in the data economy. Okay, so the goal is to be um, you know, to grow its own tech giants, not to replace the Europe uh, to the American ones, but um, but there seems to be a kind of mixed question uh, of what the motivation truly is in this context. And this is reminiscent of uh, the European scramble for Africa in 1884 and 1885. You will recall. European powers met in Berlin. Uh, and the question is, is this yet another Berlin conference seeking to carve up the world uh, so that it can be led by the civilized nations of the world? Tony Angie writes about the B Berlin conference that it transformed Africa into a conceptual terra nullius. 
And in some sense, that is the approach that the West often takes with respect to other nations, terra nullius, a lawless territory that to be conquered and governed. And one might recall that the Berlin Conference was promoted as a philanthropic act rather than the subordination of the natives. So then we might ask the question, what are these Western values that Mike Pompeo and Mark Zuckerberg would like to promote globally? Let's examine three possible values. An internet that lacks central, centralized control, an internet that doesn't have surveillance built in, an internet committed to free expression. So let's begin with the first. Is an internet free of centralized control a Western idea? Well, I'm reminded of Minitel. Minitel is of course the French network that was created uh, alongside the internet network. And Minitel, um, in order to connect a service to Minitel, it required prior authorization from the executive branch of the French government. Even then, Julian Meland and Kevin Driscoll argue in a book that Minitel was still freer than American walled gardens such as AOL and even the Apple App Store. So here is AOL's logo. Um, and it was only when I prepared for this, uh, my remark, the PowerPoint for this uh, conference that I realized how, how much the AOL logo looked like an ad for the Illuminati. Okay. And the other question then is, does the West promise an internet free of government surveillance? Well, the Snowden revelations of course should have put a rest to this claim. The NSA's mass surveillance across the world demonstrated that surveillance was not, a uh, lack of surveillance was not the key feature of Western values of the internet. And it's important to note here that the UK's intelligence services were deeply implicated by the Snowden revelations. Consider as well the Italian hacking, com uh, hack hacking co company called Hacking Team, uh, which sold surveillance software across the world, including to the Federal Security Service of the Russian Federation, the successor's agency to the KGB. This is the current website of Hacking Team's successor company, Memento Labs. Elite hackers forged in the underground. That is how they advertise themselves to the world. Okay, perhaps then it's freedom from a different kind of surveillance, surveillance capitalism. Well, at least if the company is based in Europe. So I decided to take a look at the main European app that I use every day, which is Spotify. So does the fact that I pay for a subscription service now render me uh, clear of surveillance capitalism. Here is Spotify's uh, uh, statement. We work with advertising partners to enable us to customize the advertising you may receive. These partners help us deliver more relevant ads and promotional messages, which may include interest-based advertising, also known as online behavioral advertising, contextual advertising and generic advertising. So they do profiling. And they are now set to use that profiling to target ads, uh, to place particular ads in every podcast that you get. So you will get a different ad than someone else who listens to the same podcast. Okay. And I might also, uh, as a side note, note that um, I cannot find a way to, to export my Spotify playlists Here's my Christmas uh, time playlists. Um, and uh, uh, despite the promise of data portability written in the beautiful GDPR. Okay. 
then perhaps the question is that it is uh, the Western value here to be preserved is free expression. Here, of course, we might begin by noting that there are substantial differences in the West itself about how to balance free expression with other liberties. I might also note that the day before Secretary Pompeo declared his support for uh, internet with Western values embedded in it, his State Department announced a new question on applications for US visas do you have a social media presence? And under oath, you have to now give us all the usernames that you have used in the last five years. So uh, apparently before we allow you into our country, we're checking what you have said about us. Now, by describing the failures of Western governments to live up to these uh, alleged Western values, I don't mean to suggest any false equivalence between them and authoritarian regimes. Rather, I wanna suggest that both authoritarian and exploitative impulses exist across the world and that the West is not an unequivocal force for justice and righteousness. So why does this matter? Why does it matter where the internet is seen as embedded with Western values? If we believe that only certain countries share values, then it is easier to exclude the others from a variety of benefits, especially from the benefits of a global internet, whether those benefits be economic, political, or social. We may create spaces that only, quote, civilized, unquote, states may participate in. Consider three concrete examples. First, countries might bar access to data on grounds that data is unsafe outside the transatlantic union, okay? This is a possible result of certain interpretations of the GDPR, for example. Here is a, a map of the world showing the countries that, the United, that are declared adequate for data transfer. As you'll see, it is largely a transatlantic route. Japan and the EU recently negotiated a new trade agreement. And alongside the, that negotiation, there was a negotiation about offering uh, reciprocal data uh, protection adequacy rulings between the two uh, areas. And so Japan has joined this. Argentina and Uruguay are, of course, an exception to this largely Western uh, uh, approach, but they're also very, very small places. Okay. Second, access to data. Uh, so this, this approach can deny businesses in developing countries access to Western markets. Second, access to data for law enforcement purposes might be restricted to certain preferred governments. The USA Cloud Act permits foreign government access for law enforcement, even for serious crimes, only to countries with which we have an executive agreement or through a process that can take almost a year, on average, exactly 10 months. Thus far, we have only one executive agreement with the UK. Third, the US Judicial Redress Act extends the right to pursue certain civil remedies against the US government under the Privacy Act to citizens of designated foreign countries. You can guess which countries are so designated. So what is an alternative to conclude quickly, what is an alternative to an internet based on Western values? At the beginning of the last decade, a different US Secretary of State offered a different vision. In a famous speech in 2010, Hillary Clinton declared, quote, the freedom to connect as a core freedom. But rather than asserting this as an American or Western value, she founded the freedom in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. We should be able to demand responsible technologies without reverting to old tropes about a Western civilization prizing liberty and equality and an Eastern civilization prizing domination and conformity. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>